All right, so what I've got behind me here today is a project that I've been working on. Uh, this video is separate from the line of uh, videos on that project. But this basically is a KTM 390, uh, RC390 or 390 Duke engine. And I have spent a total of 47 hours in total from the time that I start doing stuff to this to trying to make this thing run. This is a standard KTM ECU. I had all this wiring, I had the dash, and I even hooked onto uh, the, where is it, on here. I found this plug on it, and I hot wired into it to get OBD2 and use my Autel scan tool trying to get this thing running. So basically, the way this ECU works is it needs to meet a certain amount of conditions before it'll allow the bike or engine to run. So some of the things it needs are kickstand down and out of gear, clutch switch uh, engaged, so you're pulling on the clutch, and it needs uh, certain conditions from the tip sensor so that it does or doesn't run. So I had all those and I set them all up meticulously. There was a bit of hot wiring that was done. Uh, we defeated the uh, side stand by putting a 3.9K resistor from the power to the signal back to the ECU. And so that error was gone. We defeated the rollover sensor uh, with a trim pot so that the voltage to the signal line to the ECU read 2.4 volts. So that was fine. No dramas there. So all this time I'm looking on my Autel and seeing, okay, this condition met, this condition met, this condition met. Okay, fine, no problem. So then we uh, were cranking it and we were getting intermittent ignition pulse. And I think about probably 13 hours all up was spent trying to figure out and backtrack and go through different uh, scenarios to why this computer would just not give us anything. And we just got to basically just to a dead end and there's nothing more we could do. It was meeting all the conditions and it was in a place where it should have been happy and it just wasn't doing what it should have been doing. So if you're doing one of these projects or you're putting one of these motors into a buggy or something and it just won't play ball, uh, for me, the last logical answer was to take all this out, cut all this, we may lose the dash. I'm pretty sure I can get it to work again though. Uh, and for me, I happen to have one of these lying around. This is a Haltech Elite ECU. I'm not gonna be using this particular ECU. I'm gonna be using the 550 version. So this is a 750 version. Uh, and it's massive, massive, massive overkill for this engine, but it is a very complex configurable computer and will allow us to do a lot of things that uh, a cheaper one won't. So this is a stopgap because I really want this to make an event that I've got going on and uh, basically got Haltex lying around, um, but they are configurable and easy to flash. So I could unplug this plug and put it into another car, uh, flash the config file on it and away we go. So what we're gonna do today is install this Haltech on a Duke 390 motor from KTM. Okay, so now that we know what we're doing, so you can imagine this is in a motorcycle, right? Or a buggy or whatever. So this particular uh, project is a, a Power Wheels project. Uh, it doesn't look like a very basic Power Wheels project, but here we are. So the first thing and the most important thing you need for an ECU, whether it's this Haltech, whether it's this KTM module, the computer needs to know what this engine is doing. So to do that, we need a position trigger. So this KTM motor uses a reluctor based uh, trigger for the position and it uses what's called missing teeth for position. So 
first things first, now we've got that base knowledge, let's take the cover off of here and I'll explain what I mean by that. So with the cover off now, what we've got inside the cover is part of the voltage generator. So there's a, a fixed magnet voltage generator. So let's look at the first component here. So this is our trigger pickup. This guy is a magnetic uh, reluctor sensor. So what happens is when, um, in scientific terms, when a ferrous metal moves across a magnet, it generates a voltage. So what happens when these little tabs here move across this magnetic sensor is it sends a signal down these wires here, out these wires, all the way through to our engine computer. That tells us that the engine's moving around. So, if you see here, see how we've got teeth all the way around here, and then there's a gap. This is what you call a missing tooth. So because we only have a trigger position sensor on the crankshaft, and we don't have one off of the camshaft or either camshaft, we need to know where the top dead center is. So we know, need to know when to actually do something like fire our ignition, and we need to know where the position is so that we can fire our injector at the right time. So what we have here is what's called a 36 minus two position wheel, all right? So if you look at this picture, you can see all the teeth going around there, and then we have one, two, three, you get the idea, 36. But is there 36? So what it would be is 36, but we've taken two away from it. So this is what we call missing tooth configuration. So remember that for later. This will help us. So what happens is we tell the computer how many teeth we should have on the wheel, and then we tell the computer how many teeth are missing. So when it does the rotation, it knows it should be counting so many teeth, and then when it comes to the missing ones, it counts those as a position. Sort of makes sense, right? So always the first tooth after the missing teeth is always the number one top dead center. So the piston will be at its maximum extension towards the head, under compression, at ignition, and that's where usually, or just before that, is where the ignition event takes place. So now that we know we need the crank trigger, and we know what type of crank trigger we've got, we can go ahead and start to wire it. But first, let's write that down. Definitely make notes as you go. Okay, so the first step in wiring to unconfuse yourself is to think about everything needs power and ground, right? So, why not do the power and grounds first? Don't worry about the ECU connections. Worry about them after, one wire at a time. So everything, thermo fan, starter motor, injection, ignition, ECU, it's all gonna need power, right? So, why don't we just wire all those power circuits first, and then all the grounds, and then we'll wire the triggers after that. So, we know we have all those systems. We have thermo fan, we have fuel pump, we have uh, ignition, and we have injection, we got ECU. So, let's go to the bench. So over here at the bench, I have repurposed the motorcycle uh, fuse block and some of the relays, right? So, if you're confused by all this colored spaghetti, then let's just have a quick look at how relays work first. Okay, so let's start from the start. Relay is a box, right? Okay. So, let's draw a box. Okay, now let's look at what's inside the relay. You have four, four connections, right? So, let's draw one connection here, another connection there, one here, and one there. All right, so, we know we have a switch inside a relay, right? So, come down here, and we draw a little switch. So then we've got another one, uh, another connection, that goes through these guys. So what's inside here is a little coil and an electromagnet. And what it does is pull this gate open and closed. So when I first started learning about relays, I was really confused. And then someone did this for me. They drew this, right? 
So that's a bridge, right? So say we wanted to move from here to here. We need the bridge to close, right? So say we put a force acting down here. So how about our connections here? So universal relay wiring is done under four numbers, right? So if we have our supply power is usually going to be 30. Our out power out of the relay is usually 87 to our device. All right, so we're going to go from 30 to 87. So let's write that down. 30, we go 87. All right, here we go. Okay, so for this bridge to be pushed down, we need power to go from the here down. So this is our connection, it's 86. This is our connection, 85, down the ground. So, 85, 86. So we need power to move from 86 to 85 before power will move from 30 to 87. Easy, right? So, you would hook 30 to your battery, 87 to your, let's say, fuel pump. Pump. Okay. Then, most people would hook 85 to what is known as the ground. So that's the symbol for ground. Little tree upside down, trees come out of the ground. Makes kind of sense, right? So then we can put this on a switch inside our car. So when we switch it, we get this closes and then power goes from 86 to the ground, makes the bridge close, makes power go from the start of the bridge across the bridge, straight across here. Then we've made a relay work, All right? So now let's go to the next level. This is the, what I prefer, the B type. Uh, ECU triggered relay where we've got we do away with this switch this goes all the way down here to our battery now we've got a constant connection to our 86 but if that's constantly connected to ground it would trigger always right so that's where we break this and we send this to our computer which can switch it to ground. Okay, do you follow? All right, so if we want the computer to control this operation, we put this one and this one together. 12 volts and this one is our fuel pump. Okay, then this one goes to our computer. Easy, right? So why do they do it this way? There's less load on pulling the ground than there is in giving it power. So we can make ECUs lighter, cheaper, and use less power. So now that we know that, obviously we've got to have fuses as well, right? So what happens is we have our battery 12 volts, goes into our fuse block, into our relay. Then we have a couple of things coming out. We have the fuel pump, we have a thermo fan here. And these four wires here will go directly to the ECU for fuel pump control, thermo fan control, and everything else that I want to do with it. Sweet, right? Okay, let's mount these and we'll make those connection at the ECU when we can. Okay, so I've mounted my electrical block, really, and I've run uh, these ones to the front. This is my fuel pump. This is my thermofan. Thermofan there, fuel pump's gonna sit in here. I've made a tank for that. And all of our triggers are going down here. That's where my uh, coil is. I'm using a Suzuki coil with an internal igniter so I can control it with my ECU, it makes it easier. So I just need three wires, power ground, signal. I've got my injector up here, which is power and signal to the ECU. 
and all I've done is run those wires around there so they're going to be like quite neat around there my EC is going to sit about here so it's going to sit right up inside there so all my connections are going to go straight into this guy so I've just uh, I'm pretty pedantic with labeling stuff FC is fuel control uh, ECU 12 volts I've got ground injector uh, ignition as well and I'm just going to cut them off and make these connections uh, on here. So these are just uh, little crimps uh, that come with the plug. Uh, you can just buy these plugs, they're AMP plugs, uh, 34 pin. So I've just got to strip back some of these um, wire ends and put those connections on and then just put them into the appropriate slot in the ECU pins. So. All these sensors here, so we've got on this particular motor, on the Duke, uh, we've got a map sensor and it's also got the inlet air temperature as well. So there's, we have four wires coming out of here. So we've got power, ground and sensor and sensor. Then we've got down here, we've got our coolant temp sensor. So we've got two wires and that's a uh, reference to ground. And um, then we've got our throttle position sensor on the side and uh, power, ground and signal to those. So those are all five volts and the five volts is going to come from the ECU itself. So I'm going to run the five volts out of there, link all those together, then run the signals to the ECU. So it's pretty much uh, finishing off what I've done there. And you know what? That's going to be all the wiring. Amazing, isn't it? To think that bird's nest down there can be translated to this here, where there's going to be about 12 or 13 wires all up and then Turn the key, flick the switch, and off we go. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Okay, so once you get to this point, you'll be where I'm at, where you've got all the wires extended to the right length. And basically I put a bit of uh, heat shrink on everything uh, because, um, so what happens with heat shrink is when you heat it up, it gets soft and you can mold it around so that'll stop these wires like flapping around like under vibration. So that'll be quite good. So all of my wires, sorry, will go like in this direction. So this is all of the, the wires here that are needed to run the engine from the Haltech. So there's power, ground, there's signal, uh, and there's sensors in there. Um, and there's also the ignition to the coil. So it's not really that much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's all there is. Thirteen wires. So like I say to a lot of people, don't let it upset you. There's, uh, there's not that many wires. Okay, so now I'm going to put these uh, crimps on the ends and put them to into the appropriate uh, slot in here. So whether you're using a Haltech or maybe like a G4 or uh, micro square or anything like that this process will be different for your ECU as I said I'm using Haltech so I'm going to put these in the appropriate slots uh, because I'm using Elite it's really really nice in that I can uh, designate a wire pin out and then I can print the pin out and uh, just go off of that and insert the wires into the correct slot um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that Thankfully for me, uh, when you configure a Haltech Elite, you can do a pinout printout. So this printout has told me, uh, so let's go from the first one. Position A2 uh, is AVI1, which is I've uh, selected for manifold pressure sensor and so the so forth. So I've just gone through this diagram here or pinout printout and um, inserted all of the pins into their correct slot on my Haltech plug. So this is going to be the same as uh, a link plug. Uh, but really, if you're wiring this to any aftermarket ECU, then your plug may look different to this. So 
Now comes time to configure this guy. Real big word of advice, have your coil. So I'm using a Toyota Yaris ignition coil. Fits straight in there. I've made a bracket for it and a little standoff and stuff like that uh, that holds it on. You definitely want to unplug the coil because you can blow it up the first time without any assistance. Uh, if your settings are configured wrong, you can pop the coil. If your wiring is wrong, you can pop the coil. So you basically want to energize everything in that turning it on and check your coil wiring is correct. Uh, because um, yeah, basically what happens is if these coils are wired up backwards, negative to positive, this bit here on the top will catch on fire. So that's exciting. So once we've got our ECU sort of configured, what we've got to do is look down this little hole here and I've put a bunch of marks on the flywheel of, uh, of this engine and you basically have to what's called index the timing. So the way you do that, the best way is to take your ignition coil out, then take your spark plug out so that the engine will spin uh, with less load and faster as well. So what you do is hook up a timing light. The best way to do it is to have one of these extension pieces that I've got that I use usually for car stuff. Conveniently, I have a spike there and then I'll hook my ignition coil up to the end of this. Then you can put a timing light, an inductive timing light on here, hook your ignition coil up once you've got it configured, obviously. And then you're gonna have to look through here and spin the motor with a timing light and it will line up on the timing mark. So this is gonna change for uh, different ECUs, but the way I do it, uh, the way I'm going to do it with this one, sorry, is I'm going to set, lock the timing at zero and then look for this timing mark to appear down here with the timing light. So once you've got the ECU hooked up, then obviously you want to index your timing uh, there's plenty of videos on the Haltech website or whatever ECU manufacturer you choose to go to, to index the timing. But here's my setup with the coil on plug setup. I've got a long extension lead going down, inductive pickup, and basically all the marks like this that I've got on my flywheel, uh, you basically just adjust your base timing correction so until you see them in this window. So I'm on crank, 36.2, minus two. Our TDC offset angle now is 514 degrees. So that means that uh, in that uh, rotation, that's what it's indexed to. And that means our, our time is correct. So we've got a reluctor uh, system, falling edge, filter level one. This is obviously for Haltech. So we, um, yeah, just index it like that. Uh, the tooth setup is multi-tooth, single tooth home, and uh, seems to work like that. So here's my setup on the fuel tuning. I'm set to VE, petrol, using map sensor, uh, map reference for load. Um, I've set the base fuel pressure and stuff. Kicking in the guts, uh, the big red button's alive, let's go. Uh, might need a big battery. Uh, yeah. All right, so give it a go. Oh, yeah, boy! Hey, hey, hey! We're the winner! Oh, look, oh, I'm pretty loud. Oh. <laughs> yeah, boy! God damn. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I'll take on a fucking well, quad bike. $2,000. <laughs> 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 <laughs>